So far, I've created four videos documenting four of the seven major classes in League of Legends, fighters, slayers, marksmen, and tanks. Each of them has had a very storied history at one point or another in the game's 11 year time span, and more or less became the focal point of the metagame and the front page of whatever discussion was taking place at the time. The three remaining classes I have yet to cover are mages, controllers, and specialists. My initial plan was to cover the other two standard categories before wrapping it up with the final one because, you know, that made the most sense. But apparently you guys want to see it backwards, so who am I to ignore your wishes? For the fifth episode, I want to talk about the most confounding and rather confusing class of champions, specialists. Specialists are... how do I put it? I don't know how many of my viewers can relate to this, but you know those assorted candy flavors you find in like Jolly Ranchers, Airheads, Lollipops, Laffy Taffy? There's always that one flavor that everyone always leaves in the bag. They eat every single other one except that. I remember in middle school, I would bring these family-sized bag of Jolly Ranchers to school and sell each piece for like a quarter. They always wanted blue raspberry, I remember, that was so valuable back in the day. Anyways, at the end of lunch period, I would only have grape left. No one ever wanted grape, like ever, except for like one or two people that actually enjoyed it. That's what specialists are in League of Legends, those champions that very few people play in solo queue or in some cases don't even acknowledge at all. Prior to midway through season 7, specialists were called zone controllers, champions whose main playstyle consists of establishing territorial dominance. Because everyone did it in their own sort of way, it didn't quite make sense to categorize them as like a burst mage or a juggernaut or a warden, because they also didn't really fit into those categories either. As a result, they were named zone controllers before being renamed to specialists. This is the wildcard class, any champion that doesn't belong in the other 6 categories gets thrown into here, usually because they have a gimmick of some sort. If we look at the list here, Azir is about controlling his soldiers, Fiddlesticks has his Crowstorm, Gangplank has his barrels, Nara is a hybrid between hit and run marksman and hard engaged diver, Heimerdinger has his turrets, Teemo places mushrooms everywhere, Singed uses his poison, Zillion plays run with clocks, and so on. True to their nature, specialists come equipped not only with unique ways to deal with enemy threats, but bring unique threats of their own that can be hard to circumvent through conventional means. Obviously, when you're up against a Heimerdinger instead of a traditional mage, there's a lot of new things you have to think about both in the laning phase and in team fights. Mastering anyone in this subclass takes a lot of time not just from their own mechanical learning curves, but the mindset you have to adopt when playing them. To pilot a specialist well, you need to develop habits and knowledge of all the vast scenarios in League of Legends through the lens of that champion and only that champion. They have specific tools and strategies and usually aren't equipped to deal with situations the way the other 6 classes can. What separates zone controllers like Azir and Gangplank from Orianna and Zyra who can fit into the burst mage and catcher subclasses respectively is the nature in which they approach a fight. That's why the former two are specialists and the latter two aren't. Conceptually, they all play the neutral game the same way. They prefer to exert their zoning pressure for as long as possible to either block the enemy team from contesting objectives and towers, or to whittle down their health bars to make an all-in team fight much more guaranteed for victory. The primary strength of all specialists is either the psychological or persistent threat. That is, each of them have an ability or two that makes things really really scary for the enemy team to the point where their entire game plan has to be designed around dealing with that threat. Azir, Fiddlesticks, Gnar, Gangplank, and Kennen have extremely devastating ultimates that can single-handedly win fights. Teemo and Quinn are experts at catching people wandering around the map carelessly through fast guerrilla warfare or mushrooms, making it so their opponents have to be extra cautious so as not to get sniped out. As a trade-off, a specialist pressure largely diminishes once that problematic ability is known to be on cooldown or there is sufficient information on where their danger might be. Fiddlesticks can be a nightmare to deal with, but if you have areas of the map warded, he's a lot more manageable. So, having explained all this, they sound pretty dang interesting. Unlike other classes who have to exert their pressure through direct confrontations, specialists can find other ways to make themselves known and feared throughout a game, and you'd be hard pressed to find other champions with the same colorful playstyles as them. So it begs the question, why does no one play specialists? It's prevailing wisdom that out of the 7 classes, specialists have the lowest collective play rate in both solo queue and pro play. And while some of them do see routine use whenever they're relevant, the vast majority of them are among the least played champions in the entire game. Their usage is so low that I made a Why No One Plays episode on 10 out of 14 of them, which I highly recommend you check out if you haven't yet. Ordinarily, their idiosyncrasy wouldn't be grounds for the low pick rate. Some of the most popular characters in League have playstyles that are exclusive only to them. You would think that having a unique game mechanic that can't be countered through most conventional means would be a benefit, since it means you can beat out a lot of players by virtue of them simply not knowing how to stop you. But there are three factors that make their individuality more of a detriment than a benefit. 
What differentiates a specialist from a marksman, a mage, a tank, a controller, a slayer, or a fighter is that the class is incongruous within itself. When you play Garen, you can use your fundamental understanding of Juggernauts to transition to someone like Darius, Set, or Mordekaiser more smoothly. If you play Jinx, you can probably easily get used to Caitlyn, Sivir, and Twitch. None of the specialists are interchangeable. A good number of them have properties and abilities that incentivize zone control such as Zillion's Time Bombs, Gangplank's Barrels, or Teemo's Mushrooms, but their respective gameplays are so antithetical from one another that it's kind of a moot point. And even if there are champions who can sort of do the same thing, such as Cannon and Fiddlesticks, those two don't even play in the same role, one is a jungler and the other is a laner. All investments you make on that champion can only pay off on that champion, which can make things difficult when that champion either gets picked by the enemy team or banned. Even though we all know League of Legends is a giant waste of time, it's a natural tendency for players to seek out the most effective and lowest effort methods to accomplish something. And ironically, this applies even more so to tryhard overachievers because they have to learn to be hyper-efficient in order to accomplish their goals. The reality is, specialists just aren't an efficient use of their time. Sure, they have quirky ways of playing the game and can do a lot, but just because something is different doesn't mean it's better. In the end, your goal is to destroy the enemy nexus. It doesn't matter how you do it, you just do it. A lot of players may see specialists as a more complicated or convoluted way to win games, champions that take a lot more steps than they care to put the time and energy into. And this isn't just exclusive to them. Those with wholly divergent gameplay such as Aurelian Soul, Clad, and Callista are rarely played for that very reason, even if they still fit the mold of other classes. Specialists are also not very consistent, as much of their damage is locked behind some condition or factor that may not be available on demand at any time and any place. For Azir, it's his soldiers, for Gangplank it's his barrels, for Teemo it's his mushrooms, Heimerdinger's turrets, Singe's poison. Position-based threats exceed that of normal ones in those specific locations. Against a Gangplank, there is nothing more dangerous than standing within the blast radius of a power keg because that thing hits over a grand in the late game, but being outside of its range neutralizes the hazard completely. It's either that or the enemy champion is, as I talked about earlier, extremely reliant on one ability to take care of the bulk of their teamfight impact. Cannon, Fiddlesticks, and Nidalee each have one ability that they really count on to win fights, and if they miss that, they're almost completely useless. Consistency is the most influential determinant for a champion's popularity. If there's something in their kit that is innately inconsistent, that causes them to be played less. Although, Fiddlesticks and Nidalee do sport a pretty respectable pick rate, but that's mostly because the rest of their kit is pragmatic in a lot of circumstances. Finally, even though specialists force the enemy team to change their movements and methods to deal with you, that comes at the cost of them forcing their own team to do the same. If you have a Heimerdinger mid lane and a Gangplank top, you cannot conduct team fights in the same way as if you had a Ryze and Aatrox. While no one champion does things so differently that your four teammates have to drop everything they're doing to follow you, subtle changes do make a difference. Azir is one of the few backline carries in the game who can instantly rush into the frontline and sometimes wants to. He can get the cleanest 5-man Emperor's Divide but his team may not be prepared for it and follow up a little too late. By then, he's probably already dead. You may expect Elise Sin to always dive into the enemy team and occasionally throw out an insect, but Azir, not all the time. Another case would be him trying to set up a sun disc for a siege to prevent enemy flanks, but his team doesn't know how much of a difference that tower makes for fights and not use it to its fullest potential. The macro differences these champions impose are not acknowledged by a lot of players, which can lead to a lot of games where you did everything right, but your team just doesn't know how to play around you. The most noteworthy instance of this is Zillion. He provides supportive capabilities that quite literally no one else can. He can attach his time bomb to an ally vanguard or diver and give them way more explosive power in their engage, especially if he's going full AP. Time Warp is the best tempo buff or debuff in the game. 99% movement speed for 2.5 seconds. With that, even the slowest juggernauts like Urgot, Mordekaiser, and Yorick can run as fast as Hecarim or Rammus. Alternatively, you can render them completely useless because what the hell can Anasus do when he's reduced to a crawl? And of course, his ultimate an on-demand instant guardian angel to one ally. Thing is, even though Zillion has all these fancy tools that other enchanted supports don't, the only way he can make the most use out of them is if his teammates know how to. He can throw as many bombs on his frontliners as he wants, but if they don't go in, then they don't do anything. His duo partner, Aphelios, may start running away when he's low health rather than staying and fighting because he doesn't know if he can survive even after you use your ultimate. Stuff like that. Altogether, the uniqueness of specialists is both a blessing and a curse. It allows them to handle many situations that other classes may not be able to, but in doing so, it creates a whole new list of problems. 
Gimmicky characters are awesome to pick up in other games when it's just you versus the enemy, but League of Legends is a team game, meaning not only can the enemy team be thrown off by your quirks, but your own team as well. It should also be mentioned that the class as a whole gets sort of a bad rep. Most of these champions are notoriously disliked by a lot of players not just when played against, but even by their own team. For starters, a good portion of them are extremely irritating to go up against. Kennen, Gangplank, Quinn, Nar, Singe, Teemo, and Heimerdinger. And coincidentally, half of them are Yordles. Given their playstyles, a lot of these champions are known to cheese lane, more specifically the top lane. Now, in their defense, that's sort of their identity. Teemo, Singed, and Heimerdinger are anti-carries, champions who carry games by either preventing the enemy carries from doing so, or at least making it really difficult for them. Teemo's blinding dart is the biggest middle finger to auto-attackers, which automatically shuts down the entire marksman class. And a 6-item single mushroom can chunk you for more than half your health. Singed's mega adhesive stops any dashes or blinks, and his fling can launch you so far over him that you're no longer in an advantageous position. Heimerdinger's massive zone control can make it really scary for you to dive in, considering you have to face tank 3 turrets and maybe his big one. Now, I spent most of the video talking about what's wrong with the class, but there are a few positives about them that I'd like to share apart from what I just talked about. The first is their build versatility. Every specialist on this list has access to a wide variety of paths. Gangplank is a good case. He has access to so many different builds, it's insane. Full crit with Essence Reaver, Infinity Edge, and LDR. Full lethality with Edge of Night, Ghost Blade, Serpent's Fang, and Collector. Sometimes you would even go Bruiser with Starax, Divine Sunderer, and GA. And in rare cases, you might actually see AP Gangplank with Liadri's Anguish and Zork Boots. Cannon usually went AP, but sometimes you might see the occasional attack speed on hit version. Same for Teemo. Graves could go full lethality, full crit, or bruiser. Zillion can go mage support or enchanter, still do the same thing. Cho'Goth can go tank or burst mage. These champions have options and can sort through any path they want, which further adds on to their unpredictability. Moreover, it makes the champion more fun. There's a reason why specialists have some of the most loyal one tricks you'll ever see. GP mains, Azir mains, Heimerdinger mains, Nidalee mains, Tarzan is like the poster child for Graves mains. These champions never get boring because there's so much room for exploration, whereas someone like Darius, you can sort of figure out after a few dozen games. Though not to say Darius is boring or anything like that. Even though it's a shame that they have below average or in some cases non-existent pick rates, I don't think that's exactly a bad thing. Being a specialist, the wild card or the pocket pick as you will, it's only natural that they don't see a high pick rate, that's sort of their whole niche. These champions aren't meant to be super popular because then they wouldn't be specialists. That being said, while there are some brilliantly designed champions like Azir, Zillion, and Fiddlesticks, a lot of specialists do struggle with poor design. I already brought up Singed in my Worst Design Champions video, and for the most part, a lot of them do have very selfish or degenerate gameplay. Kale basically doesn't exist for the first 15-20 to 20 minutes of the game, forcing her team to somehow survive without a solo laner in spite of how crippling that disadvantage is. This might sound really bad, but League of Legends is a game that sort of discourages individuality. Donghua made a video on why every AD carry hates Alicopter. That's because he plays the game in his own way, not the way most people play supports. So even though he's a damn good Alistair player, he doesn't follow the traditional expectations of a support. Happy Chime Noises has an entire channel on off-meta picks that get to really high elo, and viewers get really excited about seeing these funky picks as like a testament that you can play literally anything to get to high elo. But I guarantee you, 99% of them, if they ever saw a Wukong support or AP Gangplank, they wouldn't be very happy. Which, again, ties back into the whole notion that specialists don't have a very healthy reputation. Don't misunderstand, I'm not saying they can't be cooperative team players. You can probably trust Timerdinger to pull the sort of stuff you'd expect from another AP champion, or you can expect Gangplank to hold his own in top lane. But that's not always the case, it's more sometimes than all the time. But that's about everything I want to say about the class. I think a few specialists are fantastic additions to the game, and it's awesome to have a really good one as a teammate, but I would sacrifice Azir, Zillion, and Fiddlesticks in a heartbeat if it meant also deleting Teemo, Kennen, Singe, Gnar, and Gangplank. I hate those guys so much. But anyways, if you enjoyed the video, a rating would be much appreciated. Sub to the channel if you want to see more content like this. Consider joining my Discord server and following me on my socials. After today's episode, we have mages and controllers left, so stay tuned, they should be arriving later this month. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you again soon. Take care.